All right, so I'm actually sleeping up top in the cab. I haven't been for the past uh, three nights, I believe. It's pretty dark down there. I just woke up, but I wanted to show you all what's going on. Uh, I was supposed to be leaving um, to move up north a few hours. Uh, I work up there. But when I went to start the RV, um, after getting warmed up a little, and she goes to start, she'll start for like 30 seconds to, I mean, I think the longest was, I, I don't know, about 45 seconds or so. And then it just dies out. Like there's no sputter or anything. It just, it just <clears throat> dies out. So, you know, I posted online or you know, talk to some other campers. And it's the same thing everyone's saying. Could be your fuel pump. Could be your filters. Um, you know, your carburetor might need to be clean. It could be water in it. Um, the hose that's in your tank could just be clogged. Could be it's so old. Could it be rusted and all. Excuse me. Um, you know, it's the same thing. Something, you know, with the fuel line or you know, the whole system has some clogging in it or whatever. Which I'm fine with that because it's really not that expensive compared to some other stuff that could go wrong. But the thing is, you gotta troubleshoot to figure out what's wrong. And I don't want to mess with all that. Oh, and if I had time, I would. But uh, this happened, it started, oh my goodness, it started Friday, um, and Saturday I was like, maybe I'll put some gas in it because it was like at a quarter tank, maybe it's, you know, sucking air or something, so I went, got a gas tank from someone, went and got some gas, put it in there, same thing, uh, topped off all the fluids, Went and get an air filter. Um, you know, I took off the doghouse and all, and just was looking at it, but, I mean, what else could I do? Not knowing much about it. Um, and everyone said, because it's an older one, it's 1983, that the pump wouldn't be in the tanks. You know, even the mechanic that, um, they were finally able to get someone out here for me. And, you know, he didn't think it would be in there. But then he called up to the auto shop and they looked up the fuel pump for this model and it said it was in tank. Which is interesting because even, like, everybody I've talked to said it's not going to be in the tank. Because of the year. Oh, goodness. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. And it was also interesting when I went to the auto shops and stuff or the auto stores because it's the weekend so no shop was open or by the time Saturday that I figured out that it was not gonna start at all for me and people that I had come look for it it was past like four o'clock or something and all the shops closed in on Saturday uh, and so when I talked to the auto stores I'm like and it's a little country town Nobody could give me somebody's number or say, oh, hey, I know this person. Or, hey, I know how to work on cars. Anything like that, which is strange to me. I'm like, you know, I'm like, you do you know anybody I could call on the weekend or any place that would be open? No, not that I can think of. Finally, one guy said he could call somebody, which I think it's actually the guy who came out because he ended up being very well known at that store. Um, so I think it wasn't, but he didn't pick up his phone then. And so then, yesterday morning, um, some friends that are heading up to the same place I'm going had stopped by and asked the people at the campground if they had called the guy for me or called someone for me. And I was still down here trying to figure out how to clean the carburetor because I was about to. And then, uh, I seen them up there, so I went up there and then the lady called the guy and... You know, he said after church he could come out here, and he did. 
um, real nice guy. And he, he checked it all. I mean, whew, oh my goodness. He checked the fuel lines, like unhooked them and, you know, seeing if someone was pumping through. Started, you know, started up front, checked the carburetor, um, you know, started and all to listen to it, seeing if any gas was in the oil. Um, he then went and looked at the fuel switch, which we thought was an inline fuel pump. Come to find out, like I said, the fuel pump's in the tank. That's a fuel switch or whatever. And it probably has a filter in it. And, uh, finally he checked the line going into it it was getting fuel so the front fuel tank probably does need a fuel pump which I knew it was starting to mess up beforehand but that's a reserve tank and I don't I mean like it means more like 12 gallons or something like that so I usually use a rear tank um yes yeah, so I can get that replaced later and the rear tank was pumping gas so he felt the fuel come to it but when he hooked it back up and tried coming out of the fuel switch, it wasn't coming out. So obviously it's getting clogged in there. It looks like a fairly new fuel switch though because I mean everything else obviously looks older. Uh, but the fuel switch looks like new. So the people who had it before me obviously was having problems with the fuel system. Um, I mean when I got the RV there was a new brand new uh, fuel pump in the box in here. So, obviously they probably were having troubles with our uh, probably rust and gunk and stuff uh, getting stuck. And they just didn't want to deal with it. Um, you know, which is fine. It's not like a huge problem. I mean, it's inconvenient, of course. But I'd rather that than like the engine or motor or something be out or, you know, back end fall off or something. But, um, that pump, of course, is back home so that'll have to be done later the fuel switch though I went ahead he called up to the store and, you know we ordered it and ordered um two clear fuel filters to go before it so since this obviously has happened before you could see those filters see when they get clogged and those are cheaper to change than that uh fuel pump switch uh, and he's going to put those on before that <sighs> so yeah I mean I'm grateful and thankful that it's nothing bigger but I'm stuck here and I'm supposed to be at work tomorrow um I mean it's only you know a few hours away so I'm going to see if I could stay with someone up there uh, for a few days. I mean, at the most is Saturday when I don't have to work Sunday. So, at the most is Saturday. Today's Monday. And then come down here Saturday and Sunday, leave out because he'll be working on it during the week. Or because the park gets here tomorrow. Um, or. They'll contact me when it's finished, hopefully Wednesday or Thursday. I'll just take off a day and come down here and get it. The only thing right now is a place to stay up there. Now, one of the ladies said that I could stay with her, but I know in an RV it's a small place, first of all. And second of all, I mean, just randomly having somebody I mean, that you met a few weeks ago come stay with you I'm sure that's a little different especially when you have your own little setup and thing going on so I'm gonna figure something out don't tell them I'm laying up here uh, it's very windy today I mean I only said 20 to 30 miles per hour since the last night and yeah it's you know probably upwards of 42 I wish you could feel it and I was going to show you because the clouds look pretty cool. And we're moving pretty fast, but I guess I talked too long. Let me try and show you. Alright. They're not as cool as they did. They were a little lower, so the sun was hitting up a little better. 
and they were moving a lot faster, so you could tell how hard the wind's blowing. The wind's actually slowed down a bit since I've been recording. But you can kind of tell from the trees blowing. I just couldn't see the clouds moving. Yep. So that's my life right now. <laughs> we'll see what happens.